Do you use or are you considering using QuickBooks Online as your general ledger? Asset Accountant is a best of breed fixed assets depreciation engine that integrates seamlessly with QuickBooks Online. This includes one click journaling of all depreciation data. When you first log into Asset Accountant, this is the welcome screen that you are introduced to. And this just shows the number of registers that you have in your account. If you're an accounting firm, you might have all of your clients in here. If you're a single corporate, it might only just be the one register or multiple registers. There's plenty of ways that Asset Accountant can handle subscriptions for any particular scenario. So what we'll do is we'll jump into the QuickBooks Online demonstration account. And what you're looking at here is a rolled up view of the fixed assets register. So on the left hand side, you're just looking at all of the asset groups. Now, none of those should be particularly surprising, but you can have as many or as few as you like. You can name them whatever you like. It really doesn't matter. On the right hand side is a number of assets that exist in each of those asset groups. This is the rolled up view of the fixed asset register as of the 30, well, the current period. You can change the period to be any time past, present or future and the register will update accordingly. You can also toggle between tax and accounts view. You can export data at any time. We know accountants love to dissect data and that is possible in any view and asset accountant, no matter where you are. Always look for the export button and that is possible. We can import assets, which I'll show you in another video. And we have plenty of reports, which you might find quite interesting. So we have asset summaries, group summaries, disposals, acquisitions. There's also forecasts. Plenty of, asset, plenty of reporting you can do for other tax or accounts for any period of time, again, past, present or future, and as a PDF or CSV. You'll find that particularly useful for all tax and compliance reporting and also for accounts and journaling if you need to do so. The best way to show, oh, um, and before I leave this view, I'm going to show you how to search for assets. So you might have a client or you might have a register that has a whole lot of assets. This is how you can search, even if you've got hundreds of thousands of assets, Asset Account will quickly search and find whatever assets exist in your register based on the criteria that you give. In this case, I've just looked for a server and there are four in this account. And you can also filter by asset group, or in this case, we have set up the location classification. I'll show you that when we get to group settings if you further wish to segregate your data. So I'll just go back to the assets tab and underneath each of these asset groups, you can see all of the assets that exist underneath it simply by a drop down and we can see the status of each asset as to whether they're in use, disposed of or pooled. Okay, I'm going to show you now a particular asset which will show you the power and all of the functionality availability within Asset Account. So I've gone into a particular ad asset and this one's called widgets. On the top tab here, we can see what our tax settings are. It's diminishing value for seven years. Accounts is prime cost for seven years. And we can toggle between the two and the data down the bottom is all the depreciation monthly that is recorded for that asset for each regime. We can see that the purchase date was the 25th of July, 2019. It was first used as of the same date. You can straddle that if you need to and the opening balance for this particular register. This asset was brought in with an opening balance as of the 30th of June, 2020. Accumulated depreciation to this period, written down value, taxable use. This gives you all of the data for this particular asset. Now, some functionality that you might like to do is you can add a reassessment. So you can transfer the asset to pool for tax. You can adjust it in terms of the first use date and all the depreciation rate. We can also reassess that taxable use if that is applicable. If we were in accounts, for example, we can also add reassessments, revaluations and impairments if you have that functionality open in your subscription. Inside this asset, we can also add components. Say for example, it was a vehicle and you wanted to add a fancy CB radio that is possible to have a parent-child relationship in your asset register. We can add a quantity, say this is 30,000 units, uh, sorry, $30,000, say they're $1 each. We can then partially write off or partially sell any particular 
units uh, as appropriate and keep that asset bundled under the one asset. We may like to also, in the details here, so this is the classifications. I will come to this. We can transfer, in this case, between locations. This is how I've set up this register or profit centers. You can do this. You can add projects, however you like to split up your data. You can add custom fields, as many as you like. So it might be serial number or license number, many ways or many items that you can add there. Oops, I'll just cancel that. Uh, you can also add attachments, say, for example, warranty information, invoices, Images, so you might like to take a photo of the asset, barcodes, whatever you like, that can be added. And also links if you have a document management system that you might like to link. I'm going to now run to the integration step. So I've just gone to register settings here. You can see pools. We can set up a low value pool or small business pool for tax. Integrations. Now, this is where I will show you how to integrate which with QuickBooks Online. It is very, very simple, and this enables the one-click journaling. To integrate with QuickBooks Online is a really simple process. Just go to the register settings, select integrations, and we will choose QuickBooks Online and connect to QuickBooks. This now brings up our single sign-on functionality and let us just log in with our applicable credentials. And now you can see that we are integrated to our QuickBooks Online account. It is as easy as that. Now to enable the journaling, I just want to go back to our fixed asset register here. And in our asset groups, of course, we need to map our general ledger entries. So let's go to machinery and equipment, for example, and this is where we can set up the default settings for each asset group. So we can set tax and accounts depreciation, but this is how the integration works. So we can see the balance sheet items, so clearing suspense, cost and accumulated depreciation accounts, and for profit and loss, depreciation expense, immediate claim, and profit or loss on disposal. You may have separate accounts for that. You can also add revaluation reserves for accounts if you require that functionality. I'll just show you how this works. It reminds us that we are logged into or connected to QuickBooks Online, and this is how you can map. This is asset account and links directly to the chart of accounts, and this is where you can map each asset group. You only need to do this once, and then the journal knows where to post profit and loss and the balance sheet items. And we will show you how to one-click journal later in the video. So I'll just go back to the register settings and now classifications. We've currently got locations. You may, you may like to add cost centers, you might like to add projects. Asset account allows you to use as many classifications as you like to split up your data. You can also add users to a register, and this is just general settings that would enable you usually to when you set up your register to calculate daily or monthly, and we've got some recommendations there. So I'm going to go back and show you one of the key, key requirements of any asset register is how to add an asset. Now, reminding you that you can add bulk assets via our import, and there's another video that shows you how you can do this in literally a couple minutes. And that's using the import function. But what I'm going to do now is show you how to add an asset manually through the interface. So here we go here. I'll just get rid of that little note. So let's just do test asset number two. We can allocate it a fixed asset code if that's what we'd like to do. And a description, my new asset, we can select which asset group it sits in. Whoops, let's not do a million, let's do $10,000. And we can nominate a purchase date and a first use date. Here we can add quantities. This is the location that we can add. Let's say we want to add a user and we'll say this is um, uh, Jerry's car or Jerry's machinery. And this is where we can set the tax and accounts depreciation for this particular asset. We do have some defaults that are set at the group level, but these can be overwritten. 
So let's say, oh, and a very handy thing that we have for tax is we can look up the ATO tables. So let us say, for example, we wanted to look up computer. And here's all of our details that we can select. And it really choose whichever one is most applicable to you. And then we have set that right so effective life four years and we might want to make that four years also for accounts and then it is as easy as saving this asset it is now integrated into your register with a purchase date of today's date and as i said before this is where all of the details for any asset is registered in the description very useful for an audit trail to show you which user did what in the asset register and when and if I go back to the grid, we can do an easy search. And if I just put in test, there's probably a couple, but this is the one we just did, test asset two, and we can bring it up like this. There's only a couple other things I want to show you before we finish this general demonstration is pools. Pools can be set up in the register settings that we just went through. In this particular example, we're using the low value pool and transactions, opening assets for any particular period. You can look at previous years and you can have a look at the closing assets. There were none for that year. You can also have a look at eligible transfers and the low value pool at the turn of every new year will give you the option to transfer assets to the low value pool and it is as easy as what I've just done. I'll go to one of these, we've got an LG microwave and you can see that that has been noted that that is now transferred for the low value pool for tax. So we are in this particular item. If we go to accounts, you'll notice that the asset is depreciating merrily as it would for your journals. But for tax, it has been put into the pool. I'll just now run to journals and this is how easy it is to create a journal in QuickBooks Online. I'll just do one for the current period. And this is all of the data here. We can collapse into, it shows you the summary for each asset group. We can expand it. These are all the details. And really, it is just a single post to QuickBooks Online. You can choose to add the purchase and disposal data, revaluation of payments, adjustments, and leases, if you have those options available. But for this example, I'm just going to post the depreciation data. And all we need to do is click on view this journal in QuickBooks Online. And here is the journal we just posted. That is it. And we can even see it's been noted with movements for the 31st of December. So that is an overview of Asset Accountant, how it integrates with QuickBooks Online and how it will largely automate all of the calculation and journaling for fixed assets, making fixed assets depreciation compliance a breeze for your company or for your firm.